Here's a live look from Washington, D.C., where a $95 billion aid package is making its way through Congress. It would include nearly $61 billion for Ukraine, $26 billion for Israel and the humanitarian efforts in Gaza, and $8 billion for Taiwan. It's already passed the House, despite a handful of Republicans who strongly oppose that measure. The Senate is expected to vote on it tomorrow. Now, as we await that vote, we're hearing from Ukrainians who live right here in the valley who are making their way to Washington to push for this aid package. New attend, they're sharing their message with our Marissa Sarbeck. A volunteer group, which included Ukrainians from the Valley and also Arizonans with no ties to that country, traveled to D.C. last week to go to the fourth ever Ukraine Action Summit. There were over 500 delegates that traveled to D.C. to advocate for Ukraine this time, and there were 47 states represented. Irene Amrine has been pushing for aid for Ukraine for the last seven months. Ahead of the House vote, her group from Arizona traveled to Capitol Hill to fight for funding from the U.S. The longer the aid is delayed, Russia is digging in and they're growing their minefields and it's a huge threat to uh, civilians. It's a huge problem for agricultural business in Ukraine and it's going to take decades to deal with this problem. Also at the Ukraine Action Summit, U.S. Marine Matthew Sampson, who just spent 635 days fighting on the front lines as a volunteer in the Ukrainian Legion. And make sure that I can just inform them of just what's going on while also saying thank you to Congress and the American people for getting us American weapons and ammo to keep us alive. This foreign aid bill passed the House over the weekend, but there were some no votes from Arizona Republicans, including Congressman Andy Biggs, who took aim at the portion earmarked for Gaza, claiming the money would end up going to Hamas. In order to get any of this through, we're gonna provide money to terrorists. That's what a yes vote is. I don't know how I can do that. Not when we're borrowing money to give that to the terrorists. Representative Paul Gosar also voted no, saying the House is, quote, on the verge of sending another $61 billion to further draw America into an endless and purposeless war in Ukraine. Representatives Eli Crane and Debbie Lesko also voting no. The bill, however, is expected to pass the Senate, and President Biden has made it clear he plans to sign it into law. Irene's group is hoping for it. When we band together and we all speak in one voice, um, results happen. Senator Mark Kelly is expected to vote yes and praise the passage in the House, saying, quote, our national security and that of our allies and partners are at stake. We also reached out to Senator Kirsten Sinema. Her office did not respond to our request for comment. Marissa Sarbach, ABC 15, Arizona. Marissa